hello guys welcome back to creatively grateful channel it's been a while i dropped a video so today i will be dropping a video on go lang so today um we will be looking at uh, implementing a file worker or rather a folder worker um, the project the essence of this project is to simply show us how to write a script that will given a folder will iterate that folder and look for all files in that folder of a specific extension and then build a tree structure given that folder so essentially what i'm trying to do is to write a script that given a folder it will iterate that folder um, find all files in that folder and then print them out alongside um, the folder where the files were found so today i'm going to be using the go ethereum um, repo I have it on my local system so I'm going to provide it as a base um, as the root folder that we're going to use for this um, script so given the go ethereum sub um, folder what we are going to do we are going to look inside that folder and print every single fo subfolder within the go ethereum folder and alongside all the fi all the go files that are in that um, folder so for us to be able to do that we need to write a couple of scripts and a couple of structures <coughs> to start with i have laid the foundation of our of our project so we have our main function and then i obtain the absolute path of the go ethereum folder that is what i did here so if we have an if we hit an error in the course of trying to do that uh the, the project completely exits but if we don't which means we'll have the root folder then we'll pass it to a run main function that only accepts the root folder and the run main function will return an integer type to us if it returns anything other than zero it means that we have failed something went wrong but if it returns a zero the project the program exits um, correctly so let's look at what the main run function looks like so in the main run function what we have here is we have we printed out um, the, the folder we passed in so that we, we are sure that we are seeing the right um, folder that we need to iterate so we print it out and then we create a collection receiver which is of type collection entry I will get into the details of the, um, the types we use in this project so we create um, a buffered collection receiver what the collection entry represent is it represent a folder and a set of files in that folder and then we created a buffered collection receiver and then we created a done channel that will signal to us that we are done iterating all the files and then we launched a subroutine to go and build um, the, the tree of all the folders and the files that we found in the um, ethereum folder now once we launch this go routine and we passed in the collection receiver it will block waiting to receive um, entries from the collection receiver and then on line 30 we have a folder walker and we pass in the root folder in the collection receiver as well and then we try to check if there is an error if there is an error we print out the error and we return a one since this method returns an integer type we will return a one to indicate that something went wrong now this is how this thing works this particular um, line 28 and line 30 works line 28 line 30 will start generating entries for collection receiver and start sending it to collection receiver while line 28 will be waiting to receive entries from collection receiver so it's more like a producer and a consumer kind of like concept <coughs> so right now so once we launch um, the tree builder and we start working the folder that we provided the root folder that we provided we need to wait for the process to complete and waiting for the process to complete means that we wait on the dawn channel once we receive a signal on the dawn channel that we are done processing every single file and folder in the given root folder then it's time for us to exit that's why we are returning a zero here now the collection entry type that is defined in our doc 
the doc is where we define all the types that were used in this project as you can see we have the folder entry we have the file entry and then we have the collection entry now the folder entry holds detail about a folder that we are currently or that needs to be processed what that means is if we find a folder in the go ethereum um, um, repo we need to keep the name keep the path and then we construct a position for it that position will indicate the location of that folder within the tree structure so also for the file entry we will keep the name of the file the base name of the file as well as the position of that file in the tree structure for um, collection entry we are collecting the folder the set of a folder and all the files that were in that folder as a single entry for the collection entry because we are making use of the collection entry to build our tree structure now so these are the types that were used in this project okay <coughs> before we're going to looking at this the code for um, the folder walker and the um, build tree there is a structure a data structure that we needed to implement to be able to handle the iteration of all the folders within the go ethereum um, subfolders so what that is is we needed to create a stack data structure the stack data structure will keep track of all subfolders within the go ethereum folder and then it will be easier for us to use it as a as a source of pulling out subfolders and looking into each of the subfolders and trying to find files in that subfolder so our stack structure is very simple it has an index it has a key and it has an entry for each of the folders that we each of the subfolders within the go ethereum folder so here we create a stack instance an instance of the stack and then we initialize it we are initializing the stack to have, uh, uh, such that the first entry is an empty folder entry there is a reason for that we'll get to that later and then we, we define the push method which allows us to push a folder a subfolder into the stack and as you can see before we push we increment the index key and then we generate a key for the new entry and then we'll push that into um, the stack um, um, data structure and then we also have a pop method which tries to pull out an entry from the stack if you as you can see here we are checking if the length of the um, the data is one if it's one it means that we are looking at the first entry an empty entry that we created when we initialize the stack this tells us that we are done there is that the the stack is completely empty and there is nothing for us to return and um, if not we try to get a key for the last entry in the stack and then check our data our, our, our data to see if there is a folder for that key if there is we need to delete it from the stack decrease decrement the, incre the index and then return the folder we found otherwise we return a nil which means there's nothing there now for the key we are constructing a very simple key um, that is a string that helps that helps us to index the the folders within the stack. So it's just a very simple structure, which means data one, data two, data three, data four, up to whatever number of um, folder subfolder we found in the Go Ethereum folder. So this is the simplicity of our stack. <coughs> Next in line for us to look at the the implementations for building for for printing out the tree structure so uh, here we have the build entry the build entry receive a single collection entry the collection entry has both a folder and the set of files within that folder remember I said each folder we will indicate the position of that folder in the tree structure and for each file we will indicate the position of that file in the tree structure so here first thing we, we do is to construct the position of this of this current folder in the tree structure that's why we are using the plus sign repeatedly um, to kind of like indicate where that 
that folder is in the entire tree structure. So when we printed out the um, <coughs> the position of the tree structure, and then we print it out. Next is we iterate all the files within that that collection or within that folder, and then also build out their their position using the plus sign. You'll get to see what this represents when once we run the program, and then we also print out the name of the file and its position within the structure, and then this is the build tree. The build tree expects a channel from which we can receive a type of um, collection entry. And then it also has a DOM channel. If you remember from the main uh, program, we, we passed on the collection entry, the collection receiver, as well as the DOM channel to the folder walker. Yeah, that's correct. That's where we, we, we passed it on. No, we passed it on to the build tree, rather. That's where we, uh, we passed it on so that we start iterating waiting for a file or rather waiting for a collection entry to be pushed for us to pick it up and then we needed to confirm to see if the folder walker is done um, looking for files and folders if it's done this channel will become nil and for that reason we are sending one to the done channel to signal to the main program that we are done processing and then we return from here otherwise we send a new entry to the build entry method or function which we defined here to print out the tree structure for that folder and all the files in it so this is the build tree it's very simple makes use of um, for and select statements to um, to work and then this is the folder worker the folder walker receives the root folder, the starting point, um, the root folder, which is the starting point from which uh, we need to start the iteration. And it, it also has the collection entry channel that we created in the main folder. Here, this is we will be sending whatever the folder and the set of files we found within um, the Go Ethereum um, root folder to that channel so that it can be processed by the build tree map function so in this place this is where we initialize the stack and once we initialize the stack we push the the root folder into the stack because that is the starting point so we pushed it in indicating that the name of the um, name of the folder is the base name we specify the path and then the position we start at 2 then we start looping and we start popping items from the stack. When we pop here, it's going to be the root. We check if the entry is nil. If it's nil, it means that the stack is empty. There is nothing to process again. So we close the receiver channel and then return nil. Because the folder worker returns an error, that's why we're returning nil because there is no error. However, if it's not nil, what we are doing here is look for all the subfolders within this given folder or within this folder. That's what we are doing here. So when we get a list of folders, we check if there's an error in the course of trying to get the folder uh, subfolders within that the current folder we are working on. If there is no error, if there is an error, we close the receiver and then we return the error. If there is no error, what we do, we iterate the set of subfolders that we found within the current active folder and then we check we confirm that it's actually a folder or a directory and then we push it into the stack as well we push those set of folders into the stack so that our stack is not empty once we are done with that we keep the name of the folder the path we construct the path if you rem if you if you notice i am using the current path and the path of the subfolder within that which makes a lot of sense Otherwise, if we don't do this, we won't be able to get the files in the folder because we need to keep the root folder as well as the subfolder part. That's why we are doing this. And then we are increment incrementing the pos we are specifying the position of the folder to be the uh, position of the active folder we are iterating plus or put it this way, the position of the parent folder plus two to indicate the position of the child folder. That's what we did here. And then once we are done pushing all the subfolders into the stack, we are now looking into the current active folder for files. 
so we are searching for any file that is a go file that's what we're looking for here as long as it's a go file it will push it out we'll pick it up and then push that into the collections um entry we we'll create a collection entry so here we pick out all the go files in there if we have an error we we'll close it we we'll save a channel and then we we'll return error we we'll return the error if not we create an instance of the collection entry we specify we set the folder the current folder we are working on and then we look all the files that we have found in this folder and then we push it into the set of files in that collection entry uh, and while we are doing that we also need to indicate the position of the file which will be the, the, the position of the current folder plus two that is why that is to indicate the the, the position of the file in the tree structure so once we are done collecting all the files within that subfolder within the current within the active folder we now send the collection entry to the receiver now we send it to the receiver so that it will be picked up in the build tree function which is also waiting for entry waiting for an item to be pushed into the receiver so this is how this is this is how the whole methods are connected so we've seen all of the functions and we've seen how they are connected and then if we go back to our main function run we created a receiver of an, a receiver channel <coughs> we created a channel of collection entry and it's a buffer channel what it means once it gets the 100 item it will block and then wait for the build tree to pick out to keep pulling entries from it and then we started a go routine to start waiting for to start picking up picking out entries from the collection receiver and it starts building our tree for us and then here we start working the parent folder which is the go epigon folder and start pushing entries to the collection receiver and if we hit an error we push it out and then we turn a one and, and then we exit and here we are waiting for the build tree to signal to us that we are done so that we can break away from this and then return a zero if we don't break away from here the program is going to hang so as we've seen the simple implementation of a folder worker let's try and run this program and see how it goes so here for us to be able to run this program we split all the functionalities into multiple files we will need to indicate those files in the go run otherwise we are going to have an issue running it so i have taken the liberty to do that so go run main.go dog.go stack.go and tail.go when i run this program it's going to wait for a while and then it will start printing out on the screen all the tree structures as you can see this is our tree structure let me get to the very beginning of it so that you see how it how the tree structures were built um, so as you can see the root is the go ethereum folder that is on my desktop the go ethereum folder is on my desktop and then plus plus <coughs> remember we indicated the, the position of um, the root folder to be two that's why we have plus plus and it's printed out now within this folder there is just a single file interfaces that go that is why we have plus 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 these interfaces that go then there is also another folder within it which is the try within try there is the committer and so on and so forth here there's also another folder within it the go ethereum tests within test you have the block underscore test and all so essentially what we did here was to iterate all subfolders within the go ethereum folder and print out all the files all the go files that are in it yeah i think um that's it for today guys i hope you enjoyed this entry please hit the subscription button and also share the folder that will encourage me to keep making interesting videos for us to enjoy thanks and have a great day